Appreciate you joining me. It is January 8th today, and we are in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 25 is our reading today. And as you see, it pertains to Abraham's death and his descendants. Uh, you have the birth of Esau and Jacob. As you have the twins struggling in Isaac's wife's Rebecca struggling in her womb. Let's start reading right about verse 27. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents, and Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright, as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? And then Jacob said, Swear to me, as of this day. And so he swore to him, and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and then he ate and drank arose and went his way, thus Esau despised his birthright. Okay, let's think about a few points, if you will, today. And one reason I wanted to start in verse 27 and 28 is so that you could see this favoritism that was going on by the parents. Esau loved Jacob, Rebe or, pardon me, Esau loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Okay, how much discipline do you think, how much discipline do you think Isaac doled out to Esau as Esau loved Jacob? I keep saying it. Actually, I just messed that up even worse. As Isaac loved Esau, as Isaac loved Esau, how much discipline do you think was there? Rebecca loved Jacob. How about how about this? How much as we think about what Jacob and Esau were like and how Esau and let's let's key in more on Esau for this. How how much discipline do you think Esau got from dad? How much self-discipline do you think how much, how much self-discipline do you think Esau had? As you look at the account, as he comes in and he says, I'm about to die. How much self-discipline did he have? How much discipline was from Isaac? How much self-discipline do you, do you think Esau had much self-discipline? If you're familiar with the rest of the account, you know, he comforted himself by wanting to kill his brother. How much self-discipline do you think? How much self-discipline did he have? How much bitterness do you think was in those brothers? They, they had been feuding for a long time. They had actually been feuding in utero. They had been fighting in the womb. And Rebecca has to go inquire of the Lord and say, says, what's going on? How much bitterness do you think was in that family? Between those brothers, you think they got along just... You think they got along before this? Or do you think there was a lot of bitterness there? Concerning the birthright, do you think Esau felt like he deserved the birthright? You think Esau felt like he deserved it, like it's mine? that he had that he deserved it now why would you think you deserve the birthright just because you came out first bah. but do you think Esau felt like he deserved it and what we're going to is why would you and hopefully you already know actually let's just go ahead and turn over there come over to Hebrews just think about our points as we go over there because we're looking in Hebrews chapter 12 in Hebrews chapter 12, this is after the cloud of witnesses, verse 1, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, 
but we're eventually going to get down to verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Right, This idea of fornicator or profane person, common, he despised his birthright. He sold it. And what we're trying to figure out is, how can someone get to that point? And so just think about it. How much discipline do you think his father, Isaac, as Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob, how much discipline do you think Isaac gave to Esau? Do you see how discipline, right? How do we get, how does a person get to verse 16? Well, the way it happens is, right, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. If there is no chastening of the Lord, or if there is a despising of the chastening of the Lord, and you remember what Esau did, he despised his birthright. Well, one way we despise our birthright is by despising the chastening of the Lord. Okay, if there is no discipline, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. If you're without chastening, of which we have all become partakers, you're illegitimate and not sons. We have all, verse 9, furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? This concept in verse 9. We have all had human fathers who corrected us. That doesn't mean that all human fathers correct their children. That doesn't mean that all human fathers discipline their children. They should, but that doesn't mean that everyone does. And I'm simply asking, do you think how much as Isaac loved Esau, because as it says, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Right? Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebecca loved Jacob. So you might just think about discipline. How much self discipline do you think? How much self discipline did Esau have, do you think? Because we better have self discipline, according to this passage. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed striving against sin. That takes self-discipline. Okay? And this is why the Lord chastens us. The Lord chastens us so that we will have self-discipline. They go hand in hand. How much self-discipline did Esau have? How much self-discipline do we need to have? Let's read some in Hebrews 12. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed, striving against sin. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you, are in, if you endure chastening, God deals with you. As with sons, for what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons." We have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled." lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. I just wonder, as we think about applications for us, if we don't endure chastening, if we don't develop self-discipline, if we allow bitterness to keep on, if we think that we deserve, if we think we deserve our blessing. 
and don't realize that it's by God's grace. Right? Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. I think there are plenty of people who, who still think that it's work, 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 work. And certainly we, we are called to obey and we are called to work. But if we think it's all about works, let's put it this way. Esau came in from the field. He was a skillful hunter, but it sure doesn't look like he, he bagged anything that day, did it? The race is not always to the swift. The race is not always to the strong. And when it comes to salvation, it is by the grace of God. So, discipline. Self-discipline. Bitterness. Thinking we deserve it. All play a role, just like it did with Esau into us despising. We can easily despise our own birthright. Appreciate you. Hope you hope you have a good day. Hope you join us for our next brief look into God's Word.